Hey guys, what's up? It's me, TSP Ruff, Chief of the Spiritual Philanthropist. So, here, I definitely want to talk about this. There's a lot of pastors and Christian preachers that are going out there and speaking on behalf of Christ, is what I want to say. They say they're speaking in the name of God or in the name of Christ, but they're doing it on behalf of Him. The reason I say that is because I don't believe that Christ was such an annoying asshole in the way that these people act. He goes up to an older man, an elderly man, who is holding on to his uh Quran and basically you know going about business as in in whatever he believes in this guy goes up to this elderly man and starts to basically degrade him in the public uh you know like a mob here and and for some reason Christians seem to really enjoy what I call public uh humiliation and uh, basically crucifixion <laughs> You know, it's like whatever was done to Christ, they're doing it to others. They're using the same exact tactic to publicly lynch people that don't have their same beliefs. There's one thing if you want to get your idea across to people, and it's another thing if you want to humiliate them in the process. You know, uh, one is communication. The other is degradation. Um, you're not really communi communicating anything, but having a lot of people get together in uh, the form of a mob and attacking one person and i don't know what this serves what purpose that it serves i, I can only think it's a self-serving uh attribute and way or process of of some form of communication it's almost narcissistic in nature i would say that it's dangerous to be honest with you for people to start listening to this type of thing and and, and thinking that that's what Christ did. Christ was the one that was being humiliated and mocked and uh, basically everything that these people, these so-called Christians are doing to others. So let's, uh, you know, let's take a look at this, guys. Judge for yourself. I don't know. You tell me. Where's the Bible? It says it, it's I don't, I, I don't know where the Bible is where you tell me where the Bible is you believe in something and you don't believe what it is oh, you, you say you believe in the Injil where is it then what's the Injil you tell me man you say you believe in the Injil where is it <laughs> you just told me I believe in something and I don't know where it is you say you believe in something you don't even know where it is have you ever read the Injil this is the Quran. have you ever read the Torah the have you ever read the Zabur oh, don't worry no, 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 no. Don't, don't worry this guy you see the hypocrisy right here he just said to me yeah, 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 I've read it. I've read it. Someone stole my... No, I haven't read it in Arabic because God is bigger than... God is not an Arabic man. God's not, God's not an Arabic man with a beard in heaven, only speaking Arabic. God, if he's God, he can speak his... He can speak to me in English. Okay, guys, I just want to point something out. Now, what he's saying is that God can speak to me in English, right? Because God's all-powerful. Look, I agree that if God is God, that there's no barrier in language. But you have to remember the Tower of Babel, guys. There was a reason that the languages were confused. Okay? God confused the languages for a reason. And what does it mean to confuse the languages? Well, some people say it's that he created different languages for everybody to be able to not be able to have one language that they could all understand. This way they can't build a tower work together to build a tower to heaven, which was the Tower of Babel, right? That's why he confused the languages. Also, you can look at it from many different angles and point of and perspectives. Uh, the other way to look at this is as well is that maybe some of these languages don't have the truth in them. They're incapable of actually having the same meanings. There are some words in Arabic and in other ancient languages that we have no reference to in the English language because it's so modern. And you can look at this from a uh, anthropological, let's say, um, speech pathologist. <laughs> you know, I'm just making the terms up because I don't know exactly where to classify it, but using speech pathology and going back anthropologically and look at the development of language and see that yes this can be a real actual case where it's called like going through the grapevine so english is a very new language compared to the ancient languages of the world sanskrit hebrew arabic aramaic all these ancient languages that were around okay 
English cannot translate everything or get the meanings to everything. So, in fact, even if God is all-knowing and all-powerful, that if God chose to communicate with you, it wouldn't just be through a language that was so new compared to the ancient languages. Because if God said that God was the Word and the Word was God, he put emphasis into the words. He was saying, I am the words. Now, if you could only find the true meaning like of the word God in Aramaic, the same language that Christ, Yeshua, which is his real name, not Jesus, when Yeshua spoke with his very last breath, and he said, Elah, Elah, Sabachthani, he was saying, God, God, why has thou, or Father, Father, why has thou forsaken me? But it's God, God, why has thou forsaken me? And uh, he spoke in the exact language that God was the Word and the Word was God. Okay? That's the only translation that we can get in English of that beginning part of the Bible. Right? And I'm sure that if you go to some scholars, they probably have a much deeper understanding of what those words mean. But you have to use it for the very limited ways that we can break it down god was the word and the word was god that means there's emphasis on the language itself and these people that are running around doing this degrading and, and condemning and judging with these also these muslim children are there in the background to see this man condemn this older muslim man and look at the little girl's face there this so-called christian again is not taking these things into consideration he is chastising and condemning and degrading and it's really really poor in, in in its in his behavior i would say that if christ acted like this indeed most likely he would have gotten lynched himself because who in their right mind especially during that time two thousand years ago would allow anyone to degrade another human being regardless of their beliefs in a public manner like that you know, exactly what was done to Christ is exactly what they're doing to him. What these Christians do to a lot of people that don't believe what they believe. They go around and they even have, I think everybody's adopted this this way of communication, which is really not healthy. But uh, let's look further and see how far this actually goes, guys. I'm very curious. And I've read the, I've read the Quran in English. Are you telling me that God is limited? You're telling me God can't communicate his message in English properly so that I can be saved? believe in God and do you believe that God had been killed by the people? Oh, I don't believe God has been killed by people. Do you? Jesus. God hasn't God hasn't been killed. What happened to Jesus? In your he, he was killed. He was a man. Yeah, well, was you believe in him? I, of course I believe in that man named Jesus. He was killed. killed for what? So you, I answered your question. You said, did God die? And I said, no. The man Jesus Christ died. Oh, who sent the Jesus? God sent him. This is the same God who sent all the prophets. Absolutely. That's why you believe all? Yeah, and he sent the you know what the sad thing is here too because the man the elderly man is limited in his vocabulary so this young so-called christian guy you know who's defending his faith i don't know against what exactly here um is not only mocking and humiliating this this elderly man but the fact that he doesn't speak english as good as ever as he does or anyone else around him does is mockery humiliation because it's basically a form of prejudice as far as i'm concerned because the man obviously has a different faith a different culture a different you know religion belief system and he's basically doing what america has been known to do so whatever happened to black americans here in this country in america black americans have adopted their style of communication whether or not they realize it i would not consider it anything holy or anything that has any connotation to uh anything that's uh auspicious in any way i would say it's just as egregious and horrific as what america was before slavery ended and segregation ended he's speaking as if he has superiority but look at who he's talking to guys you have to look at these things and look at the woman in the background just now with the children 
because they take their faith very seriously. They didn't come there probably to argue with anyone, but this man found it. He found it okay. He said, yeah, I'm going to go and attack this elderly uh, gentleman that can't speak English and mock him in front of a crowd. And I'm going to keep reiterating that it's exactly th what they did to Christ. So is this Christian being Christ-like? No, he's being anti-Christ-like. Because remember, Christ was the one that was being mocked and humiliated. And that's exactly what he's doing to this man for no apparent reason at all. Just because he can. And he's in, a, he's in his country. You know, and everybody speaks his language. And you have to look at these because black people talk about that all the time. What's racism? And institutionalized systemic racism. Well, it's exactly what this man is doing right here. Right? That means that everybody speaks his language. Everybody's American. So he has seniority and power over this man that doesn't barely speak English. So here's another uh, great example of what black people claim white people are the only ones that can be racist. But yet, there's a form of it right here in front of us that everybody seems to deny. Story sound familiar, guys? It should. Let's take a look further. The Messiah, do you believe in him? No, that's why I to... Do you believe in the Messiah? Which Messiah? You, you tell me, do you believe in any Messiah? And tell us everything about everything. That's why. Everything about everything? What's the Ten Commandments? About the uh, prophets. About What's the Ten Commandments? Does the Quran talk about the Ten Commandments? About what? What is it? Show me an ayah in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Quran that lists the Ten Commandments. Do you have one? The prophets. Oh, just give me the ayah. I just want to know. You said it says everything about everything about everything. Give me the ayah in the Quran that lists out the Ten Commandments. And then I'll believe you. Allah send us more. Oh, come on, man. Now, now you're just lying through your teeth, bro. You came here to talk to me. You're just lying right through your teeth. The Quran. Again, I want you guys to look at who he's talking to and look at the situation. He's talking to an, elder, an elderly man that doesn't barely speak English. And he's basically saying, calling him a liar now on top of it. So he's not only mocking and humiliating, he's making accusational uh, like accosting him accusationally, you know, calling him a liar. And that's the worst thing to do to anyone that has a faith that they believe in. If he found a scholar, let's say like uh, Uthman, Sheikh Uthman, or guys like that, he wouldn't be able to talk to him, and he wouldn't want to talk to him because that guy is a scholar and, and speaks English very well. And this is really horrible because what he's doing, he's preying on someone weaker, Someone without the skills and ability to have a conversation on that level, because he doesn't have the, he doesn't have grasp of the English language as well as all the people that are there, majority of the people that are there. And remember, this is your country, right? He's in America. This guy's not obviously born here in this country. What a shameful thing this man's doing. What's this guy's name? Pastor David Lynn. If anybody follows this man, you become held accountable for promoting this type of things when if you look at christ and everything that christ did when he was alive in the flesh and the things that were written about him he would have walked in here and prevented this kind of a cost a costing situation from happening he would have said you know wait he has his beliefs let him be you know and then again if christ was there you don't know what christ could have done through love and compassion, not through degradation and humiliation. He never used those tactics. He never tried to humiliate people. He tried to enlighten you. But the way he did it, he used parables, guys. He used a ways of thought. He did not use ways of humiliation and degrada degradation and mocking. Those are the things that the people of his time when Christ was right before he was crucified. That's what was done to him. Basically what this so-called pastor is doing to this man. You'll see this over and over and over again. That they have a tendency to become a mob and a crowd that mocks and humiliates. It's completely ironic. It serves not God but probably the opposite of God. And uh, 
I don't know how people can't see this, guys. I don't know how you can't see this for what it is. It's shameful. It's really shameful. But let's look further and see how deep this gets. He does not talk about everything, about everything, about everything. The reason why you need to believe in the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, is because that speaks about something, and your Quran speaks about something else. Show me the Ten Commandments. Show me, I don't care about the Christian scholars. Show me the Ten Commandments in your Quran. His name is just Ten Commandments in your Quran. Which moments? Show me. Okay, I'm waiting. I'm waiting because you won't. I hope you guys see what's going on here. If you think that Christ would have been so arrogant, and I'm going to be straight up blunt and honest, I mean, this guy is extremely disrespectful to this elderly man that doesn't barely speak English, and he's doing it with a mic in his hand and a camera held towards him. Do you think Christ walked around with a microphone and had a guy with a camera walking around following him everywhere? No, he had people, followers, apostles that were following him in person. They were there, but they did not yell and scream at others. As a matter of fact, Christ used to disperse mobs. The story of Mary Magdalene, the greatest example of it. They all surrounded her, and basically what he's doing, casting stones at this man, he said, before you cast any stones, which one of you has committed no sin? You cast the first stone. He stopped and made them think. He said, which one of you has never committed a sin? You cast the first stone. And they all dropped their stones and walked away, and therefore a bond was formed between Mary Magdalene and Christ. Okay? He went around saving people, not humiliating and mocking them, like what this pastor here is doing to this man. And instead of having the words to enlighten and encourage this man into something that may be more beneficial or even to find a mutual relationship, something peaceful, he's creating accusational insults, derogatory remarks, straight up disrespect by not allowing him to speak. He's an elderly man. Where is your respect, Pastor David Lynn? You have none whatsoever. I think you need to go back and reread the story of Christ and how he lived, how he walked, and how he talked. Okay? You need you need to go, go back and do that because right now you fit more the mold of the people that mocked, humiliated, and crucified Christ. That's what you look like to me here. So these are things that people need to talk about. I'll find it, but I'll wait. I'll wait. Ten Commandments. Just tell me, man. Tell me the Ten Commandments. So while, while, while we wait, it's ticking on. I think I need to put on some music. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, Give me the Ten Commandments. But, but, but I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you something else. I, I can show you some stuff. I can show you some stuff. I mean, it's... I can show you some stuff. So, guys, look, I'm going to stop it there. You can always watch this video. It's called Man Killed Jesus. But, but you know, it says uh, Pastor David Lynch, CFM, Toronto Evangelizing, right? So you can go and watch that entire video if you're interested in it. Uh, listen to the things I say. And for yourself, try and make sense of what I said. If you have any understanding and any respect and any compassion and love in your heart, you'll understand the words that I said about the process this man is using here there's nothing friendly nothing nice nothing that you can learn from here and the young people that are there those young children muslim kids especially that were there that were watching this man do that to an elderly man this is a very wrong example to set for the younger ones you know because they're going to look at you as a as a, a militant as an extremist in what you believe by degrading the people who have the same belief as that child you know that child grew up into islam most likely those children and the woman also so she was getting emotionally in turmoil. How? What's the use of making people feel fear? I don't believe that Christ walked around putting fear into people's hearts. I really don't. And humiliating, humiliating them and mocking them. But we know that Christ's life, he was humiliated and mocked by the people that hated. I use the word hated. Hated him. Okay, guys? What you're seeing here is this man's own personal agenda his own personal mission to go out and express his hate hiding through the so-called morality of his biblical righteousness okay as being a christian which is i'm going to call it as it is is bullshit this guy is a narcissist he has no he has no more uh 
understanding or or uh, ability to evangelize than the average Pharisees that were the ones to cast blame and judgment upon Christ. It definitely isn't Christ-like, guys. Go and reread the Bible about Christ, and you'll see he fits the mold more like the Pharisees and the people mocking Christ than he does of Christ. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. If you're brave enough to answer and leave some comments, I'd be more than happy to read them. But uh, this is shameful, you know. For Christians, you know, if, if you call yourself a Christian, you need to really find a more respectful way of debating and or, or getting your points across. This is really shameful. Um, I I'm, feel like I'm 100% right that Christ would not have gone about things like this. So... All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. If you like what I do, please hit that like and subscribe button. That'll help me out, help the algorithms. But I will be making more video, go, uh, more videos regardless of what happens. It's not about money or anything like that for me anymore. It's just about trying to set things straight and trying to get things right and trying to create some more understanding. And, yes, I have gotten upset in the past and emotional, but those probably are for some good reason or another. But uh, I'll be able to defend myself when the time comes. I always have been. And I don't need to humiliate others in the process of, of doing that. When I always express my beliefs, I try very hard not to have to use accusational, you know, slurs, if I want to call them that. <laughs> you know, or degrade anyone to do that. But guys, check yourselves, you know, communicate with some compassion. And you'll see things will work out much better. All right, guys. Have a great one. Stay safe. Ooh.